From the prehistoric days of the discovery of fire, to the invention of the printing press in the 15th century, to the Wright brothers' invention of human flight, mankind has always strived for forward progress through innovation. My whole life, I've always been fascinated by how things work, and I've loved designing and making things. Many years ago in elementary school, I went to a science fair and saw some college students demonstrating how a superconductor can levitate above a magnet. This sparked my imagination and inspired me to learn more about the science behind this concept and how it could be used in everyday life. Here's my prototype of a superconductor levitating in my garage as I try to figure out how to accelerate it and decelerate it using magnets. This prototype was my attempt at seeing if and how superconductors could be applied to transportation. When the pandemic sent us all home two years ago, our family decided that a it would be fun, healthy, and practical to grow our own food at home. Our previous attempts at a family garden resulted only in the increase of local rabbit populations and some very healthy birds. So I decided to design and build a custom animal-proof garden bed that would ensure that our produce made it into our stomachs. Six years ago, I started a robotics team with my friends, and I'm now the lead designer and mechanical engineer on my team. This responsibility requires me to come up with innovative and creative ideas that solve challenging tasks every day. For example, here's a one foot tall robot I designed two years ago that can stack blocks up to five feet tall. Here's another robot I made that can collect and accurately shoot rings into a target from up to 10 feet away. As you can see, I love to design, innovate, build, and make, but I've always felt like I was missing something. This is why I went looking for a process that leads to innovation. I would like to share my findings with you, as well as my additional thoughts on the topic. My search eventually led me to the concept of first principle thinking, ideated by Aristotle. First principle thinking is a thought structure that enables you to think about everything in categories and subcategories until you get down to the smallest subcategory possible, which is the first principle. Aristotle defined the first principle as the first basis from which a thing is known. First principle thinking is the search for a fundamental truth that an idea is built upon. Once these first principles are found, the idea can be improved upon by improving or changing the levels above the first principle. A great example of this process is a book. First, you can break down the components of a book into categories and subcategories. A book is made up of chapters, which are made of paragraphs, which are made of sentences, words, and letters. In this case, the letter is the first principle of a book because there are only 26 of them in the English language. The letters themselves cannot change, but everything on top of this can be improved, which in turn improves the final product. You can learn better vocabulary to improve your words, better sentence structure to improve your sentences, etc. This is important because if the simple parts that make up a complex whole are improved, then the complex whole must improve as well. This example describes the Aristotelian method of using first principles to understand an idea, which can then be improved upon. Although first principle thinking can lead to improvement, I believe that this method is only part of the process that leads to innovation. The concept of first principles can also be used to innovate by identifying and replacing what used to be a first principle with a new first principle. I call this the concept of false first principles. False first principles are first principles that seem valid, but are actually obsolete. Let me show you some examples. Let's take the case of Ford. When Ford was making cars in the early 20th century, the conventional method to build a car was to have a few people assemble the car piece by piece until it was fully built. This was the first principle of car manufacturing at the time. Henry Ford challenged the first principle by creating the assembly line through his belief that more cars could be created faster with specialists each contributing to a small part of the assembly process repeatedly. What was a first principle became a false first principle, not only for all car manufacturers, but also almost all types of complex manufacturing in the future. Now let's talk about Amazon. Conventional thinking in the 1990s 
was that people would only trust face-to-face -face transactions for purchases. Amazon believed that this was a false first principle and built an online shopping platform that depended upon this fact. Obviously, Amazon was right. And today, the entire world shops online, validating this as a new first principle today. People trust online shopping. Now to the most recent example, SpaceX. When SpaceX was founded in the early 2000s, launching a rocket was extremely expensive because rockets were single use. The technology needed to make a reusable rocket did not exist at the time, and no one believed that rockets could be reused. SpaceX believed that this was a false first principle and set out to replace this conventional knowledge with a new first principle. Rockets can be reused, just like cars, trains, boats, airplanes, and every other form of transportation. These examples demonstrate that what was a valid first principle at one point in time can become a false first principle over time. These false first principles can be anything, a manufacturing process, as with Ford, a psychological assumption, as with Amazon, or an obsolete technology, as with SpaceX. Yesterday's first principles can become today's false first principles. The key to innovation is correctly identifying a false first principle and breaking through it. First principle thinking can be used to facilitate incremental improvements as well as innovation. But in order for it to be used to innovate, it should be incorporated into a broader framework. I call this the framework of innovation. There are four steps to this process. First, define the goal. You have to know what you're trying to achieve before you set out to do it, even if it seems impossible with current circumstances. This goal can be very broad, but it needs to be clearly stated. For example, SpaceX defined its goal as making launching rockets cheaper. Second, find the first principles. Ask as many questions about your goal as possible so you can break it down into its fundamental building blocks the first principles. SpaceX broke down the cost of launching rockets into its many components. The first principles included the cost of the rocket fuel, the steel, aluminum, and other metals needed to build the rocket, labor costs, etc. Third, isolate the false first principle. Investigate the first principle assumptions to see if they still hold true today. Also look for first principles that you believe could be made obsolete through innovation. Once you've found a first principle assumption that is no longer true, or one you believe could be proven wrong, you have found the false first principle. For SpaceX, the false first principle was the cost of the components needed for every rocket launch. Finally, break through the false first principle. This false first principle is going to be your target or focus. It will likely take a lot of hard work and some time to replace this false first principle with a new first principle. Now back to SpaceX. They had to prove it was even possible to reuse rockets so that the material cost per launch went down. This technology did not exist when they first set out to establish this as a new first principle. They worked hard, blowing up a lot of rockets along the way, and with time proved that rocket reusability can make rocket launches cheaper. Breaking through this false first principle was the main innovation behind SpaceX. Although these four steps are simple to define, they are definitely not easy to achieve. Just because you have gone through this process does not mean you won't fail along the way. It just means you're likely focusing on the right thing. I've told you why this is important to me, but I believe you should care about this too. Innovation is becoming more and more relevant as time goes on. As you can see in this data, from the US Patent and Trademark Office, the number of patents has greatly increased over time. If we use the number of patents as a proxy for innovation, we can see that innovation has rapidly increased over the past few decades, and future generations are likely to see this increase continue. The workforce of the future is going to need more innovators, and this framework for innovation is one tool that can be used to make this job just a little bit easier. This is such an amazing time to be passionate about innovation. I am so excited to have found this framework for innovation, and I'm really looking forward to using it to design, build, and make projects in the future. I believe that, at its core, innovation is about breaking down and breaking through. I also believe that this concept of false first principles is the best model for innovation today. However, the nature of innovation suggests that the concept of false first principles itself 
could become a false first principle in the future. Only a true innovator would be able to make this kind of breakthrough. But until someone finds a better way, breaking down concepts into their first principles can lead to improvement. But breaking through false first principles leads to innovation. So let's break through some false first principles and rethink tomorrow together. Thank you.